bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensah Otobiel. And now, today's word. I'm doing Words of Our Salvation, part number eight. Uh, today, uh, we have so far looked at the terms born again, redemption, new creation, justification, sanctification, atonement, righteousness. And today, we'll look at the word adoption. Adoption. So this is part number eight of Words of Our Salvation, subtitle, Adoption. It's a very powerful word uh, related to our salvation. And uh, it, it explains how we became children of God. As believers, we call ourselves sons and daughters of God. We say we are children of God. In what sense are we children of God? How did we manage to become children of God? And that is what adoption explains for us. Uh, we are children of God by adoption. So let me explain the term adoption as it is used in the New Testament. Adoption is the divine work by which God receives born-again believers as his sons and daughters. It is the divine work by which God receives born-again believers as his sons and daughters. It is part of the work of salvation and it occurs as we get saved and as we are redeemed and justified, uh, we receive adoption as well. And one of the things you would notice as I've been treating words of salvation is that there are different parts and aspects of our salvation. And you need to understand all the components of what it means to be a born again Christian or saved or redeemed or justified. And adoption is one of those. So for our text we would look at Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. And this is what it says. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of of adoption by whom we cry out Abba Father the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God so if you look at this passage it tells us what happens when we are adopted by God into his family. First thing, it says that we receive the spirit of adoption. We receive the spirit of adoption. The spirit of adoption is imparted by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit takes residence in us. He is, as if we we'll use a natural analogy, he's the adoption agent. He is the one who is facilitating the process of adoption. He works out the details of our adoption into God's family. So we receive the spirit of adoption. That is the first thing the passage says. Then it says also that when we receive the spirit of adoption, we are able to say, Abba, Father. Why? Because God becomes our Father when we receive the spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit creates a relationship between God and us, and we are able to call him Abba, Father. In, in the language of uh, the Hebrews at that time, Abba will be equivalent to Papa, similar word or Daddy. Abba, Father, God our Father. 
He gives us the right words with which we call God. Yes, he is the creator. He is the almighty. He is the great I am. But he is also our father. So adoption doesn't just make us born again. But it makes God our father. It's one thing being redeemed and another thing God becoming your father. And when God becomes our father, then we become God's children. So the passage says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So there is the spirit of adoption which we receive. God becomes our father and we become God's children. Adoption is not the same as justification. Justification is a pronouncement by God, a legal pronouncement by God that says you are not guilty. But not guilty does not mean that you are a child of God. It simply means you are not a guilty person. It's similar to, uh, um, if I would use a natural analogy, you go to court, you have a case um, at the court, and the, and the case is adjudicated, and the, and the judge says, you are not guilty. He frees you. It doesn't mean you become the judge's child. It just means that by the rules of the court, you are not guilty. So you can walk away free, not guilty, but you have no relationship with the judge. But in our case, not only did God say we are not guilty, he went ahead to adopt the not guilty ones as his children. I hope you see the difference. So there is one thing being justified by grace and another thing being adopted by God as his child. So... John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, talks a bit about the ministry of Jesus Christ and how he makes us children of God. John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. But as many as received him... To them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Who were born not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. But of God. But as many as received him. To them he gave the right. To become the children of God. Christ authorized our adoption. He gives the right for us to be adopted by God. We don't become children of God by our own authority. We don't become children of God by our own will. You don't just decide, I will be a child of God. You have to be given the right. You have to be given the authorization. Now, uh, when you read the uh, Old King James Version, it would say that as many as believed in him, to them he gave the power to become the children of God. But when uh, I read in the New King James, it says to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Is there a difference between the power and right? Yes, there is some difference. In, in the Greek language, power is normally uh, denoted by the word dunamis. Dunamis. It means you have the power uh, to do something. It's, it's executive power. Uh, but the word used here that is translated as right is exousia. That means that somebody has authorized you. Somebody has given you the permission to do something. So we don't just have the power to become children of God. We are permitted to be children of God. So that, that means you can't go about saying, from today I'll be a child of God. No, he permits us to become children of God. He gives us the right. He gives us the authorization to become the children of God. So our adoption is authorized by Christ Jesus. Without him authorizing it, we will not be adopted by the Father. And the reason is because He is the Son. And He is the only begotten Son. So if somebody else must become a child of God, 
the only begotten must permit it to be so. He must authorize it. So as many as believed in him, to them he gave the authorization, the right to become children of God. And how did he do it? He did it first by freeing us from sin. He freed us from sin. Sin made us unacceptable before God. Sin brought us into bondage and took sin out of the way, took us out of the domain of Satan, delivered us from the bondage of sin and washed away all our sins. So that's the first thing Christ did. It's adoption day. The child has to be adopted. It's almost like going to the orphanage. It's adoption day. And there is a parent who is coming to adopt. But somebody must prepare the child in the orphanage to meet this prospective parent. And what does the person do? The person goes to the child to be adopted and say, hey, listen, somebody is going to adopt you today. And, and you have to be your best. So he gives him a bath. He washes him, cleanses him, and, and makes sure that the person is suitable. That's what Jesus Christ did. The father wanted to adopt us, but Jesus came and he says, in your state, you don't look good. For the man who needs to adopt you, I need to clean you up. And he cleans us up by the shedding of his blood to wash away our sins. Not only that, he presented us to the father. He made us presentable. And how did he make us presentable? He put his own garment of righteousness on us. So that when we stand before the Father, we will be presentable and acceptable to him. He washed us and presented us by clothing us in his righteousness. So those are the first two steps. He freed us from sin, washed away our sins presented us to the Father, put his righteous garment on us, and then number three, he shared his sonship with us. He shared his sonship with us. He, he, he said to the Father, I am your son, and I authorize for these ones also to become your children. So he then confess the same relationship of sonship on us. He shared his sonship with us. But that doesn't mean we are like Jesus in every sense. We are sons of God, but not the same as he is. He is a son of God or God the son by nature. We are the sons of God by adoption. It's like the difference between uh, a parent who has a natural born son and an adopted son. They are both legally children, but they didn't come the same way. One came naturally, and the other came by a legal process. We become sons of God by a legal process. He pronounced us not guilty, justified and then adopted us. But Jesus Christ was never pronounced not guilty. He has eternally been God the Son. And he shared his sonship with us. So we are both sons of God, but we are not the same. He is the vine, and we are the branches. So when we become sons of God, God does not create two vines. There is only one vine, and he plugs us into himself. We become the branches of the vine. He is the head. We are the body. There are no two heads in the body of Christ. There is one head and the rest of us are part of the head. And in that sense, we become part of his sonship relationship. So he shared his sonship with us. So what does adoption do for the believer? What does adoption do for the believer? I'll talk about three things and then we'll take communion. First, adoption brings us into God's family. Adoption brings us into God's family. Makes us part of God's family. We share in God's nature. We receive God's name. 
We become brothers and sisters with other believers in Christ. We become part of God's family. We are all named by the same name. You know, some, sometimes I, I think we forget that we are not just church members, but we are family members. Sometimes people say things like, if it wasn't for church, I would never have known you because you are not my family. The closest family on earth is not our earthly family. It's our spiritual family, the family of God. You know why? Because your earthly family will end here on earth. But there is a family member whom you are going to spend eternity with. And that is why we call each other brothers and sisters in Christ. These days, I don't hear much of people calling each other brothers and sisters. But uh, when I got born again, we called each other brother John, brother James, brother Mike, sister Pat, sister Mag. If there was a Mag. <laughs> sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. No matter how old they are. We all called each other brothers and sisters in Christ. And I think it's good for us to recognize that in the body of Christ, we are not just people who attend church at ICGC Christ Temple, but we are people who have been brought together by God and are part of his family. We have one faith, one Lord, one spirit. We are members of the body of Christ. Adoption brings us into God's family. Without adoption, we would have been people who were saved but do not belong to each other. Born again, but born again on our own. Justifies, justified on our own. But adoption says your justification, your salvation now is connected to something. You are now in a family. We are in God's family. So adoption makes us a part of God's family. Secondly, adoption gives us access to God's presence. We don't just come to the family, but we have access to the Father. It's one thing uh, being in a family and another thing having access to the Father or the head of the family, uh, that you can spend time with him and, and talk with him and he will receive you. And when God adopts us into his family, he gives us access to himself. We are not separated from him. We are brought close. We are brought nigh to him. And that is what adoption in Christ does for us. It brings us into God's presence. And thirdly, adoption grants us privileges in God's family. Adoption grants us privileges in God's family. We are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. We are partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. We have peace with God. We have the right to use the name of Jesus. We become co-laborers with Christ and we are assured of eternity with God. Adoption gives us privileges privileges, rights and privileges. And there are things that we can do in, in the name of the Lord that other people cannot do. And our privileges start from here on earth and continue to eternity. They are not privileges that end when uh, we die. They are privileges that we continue to have after we are dead because our relationship with God is not Earth bound. Our relationship with God is heaven bound. Our relationship with God is not time bound. Our relationship with God is eternal. We love him eternally. He loves us eternally. And that is what adoption means for us as Christians. We have privileges with God. We are part of God's family. We have access into his presence. We are part of each other. We have boldness to come before him in prayer. And he receives us when we do.